Hey guys, Whipchip here with a brand new video, and in today's video, I'm going to be showing you guys how to fix your LEGO Ninjago Dragons Rising minifigures. Now, I'm not talking about the characters or outfits not seen in the sets, like say Administration J or Dr. LaRoe, but instead doing things like fixing the armor or even adding a little paint. In this video, we will go character by character, fixing each of their minifigures they got last year. Starting with Aaron, we can see he got three minifigures, one being non-canon. For his casual outfit, he is missing his hood seen in the show. I also exchanged the waffle accessory he came with for this more show act at Pi one. Then there is his ninja suit. Now, this will go for almost every ninja in this video, but in the show, there is a clear color difference in this buckle thing and the rest of his scarf. You can see this pretty well in Aaron's here. I also did decide to make a version with the mask down as well, to more accurately represent how he looks majority of the time in the show. Then there is Sora, who just like Aaron got a non-exclusive suit as well as a casual and ninja one. Of course, I gave the casual version this custom hair, but I'm sure you could just give her the new one that comes in that Ryu set. Then there is her ninja hood, which in the show does not have that buckle, so I decided to sand it off and try to make it a little slimmer. Also for Sora, I did decide to give her these pink hands to match her tech power in the show. For Lloyd, he only had two canon outfits. Of course, once again, painting that buckle and mask as well as giving him a sword seen in the show. Also like Aaron, I made a mask down version complete with Wu's staff. Now, I know these next two are not canon, but I thought they could use a little upgrade. For Samurai Lloyd, I gave him this golden horn piece as well as added armor to this mech suit from the core mech. Then there is Kai, who had three canon minifigures this wave. Of course, I gave him the same fix to his suit as Lloyd and Aaron, a hood up variant as well as a hood down one. I also made a more show accurate blacksmith outfit to match the design seen in March of the Oni. Nia had one minifigure non-canon this year, but her Dragon's Rising suit seems so much worse when compared to her design with the painted buckle. I also gave her her spear, as well as a hood down variant. Following, Zane got three minifigures this year. Of course I had to fix his Dragon's Rising suit, as well as giving him these shurikens of ice, which I think he used in the show. I also changed out these light gray hands to dark gray ones to match his on-screen counterpart. Then for Detective Zane, I just added these legs from the Detective minifigure to give him those boots. Both of these customs definitely turned out pretty great. For Cole and Jay, both these guys only got two outfits this year. Funny because, like, Jay wasn't even wearing it in the show, but whatever. Either way, I still fix them both by adding their weapons and shaving their hoods. Next up, we have the baddies of the wave, with these three only needing fixing. Now, for some reason, they gave Empress Beatrix these nasty cheekbones, so of course I had to meticulously erase them from her face to match the on-screen counterpart. Then I gave her a custom cape cut from a Superman one, as well as the weapon she held in episode 10. For Roz, I painted that nose and teeth of his and gave him a more show accurate hammer. I think this is one of the most crucial fixes of the entire video and one that every single person that has a Roz minifigure should do. It really does improve the minifigure a ton. On the other hand, Rapton's change I'm not as sure about, with the show seeming to have his hair set at a gray color, but it just looks weird on the minifigure. I'm keeping mine white, but just something to talk about. Then, of course, there are the Bone Warriors the ninja fought in the Core Wave, who did indeed appear in the show. For the Bone King, I painted that crest of his, as well as his sword. Then, for his knights, I just made a couple of swaps to make them look closer to what we see on screen. Last year, we also got a slew of side characters, mostly thanks to Ninjago City Markets. There's a lot, so we'll go rapid fire! For Racer 7, I created this much more accurate outfit and face for her, changed how not Barg's legs, Darius legs, face, and accessory, swapped Gil Gossip's hair to this official piece, painted Borg's neck and switched out his legs, scrapped this mini pics all together for this much more accurate show one, gave Camille a better face, some skates, as well as a jade blade. Also, the Dragon's Rising hoods actually fit really well as the helmets they use for that skating thing, so of course I had to paint one and put it on her. And finally, for Vinny, really the only accurate thing is his hat and jacket, so I swapped everything else out. Now all we have left are these NPCs from the markets, of which two can be used as inspiration for some figures we can make from their parts, such as Zane in his disguise from the Wu Crew episodes, as well as this chef from Ninjago City. Well, here is the whole collection. Thank you guys so much for sticking around all this way. There were so many modifications done in this video that I hope you got inspiration for at least one you can do for your own minifigures. Thank you guys so much for watching and have a wonderful day. Bye! Oh, yeah, I guess there's also this ghost warrior. Uh, I don't really think anyone cares.